Hello and welcome to uh, this latest Travolution webcast. Today we've got the CEO and founder of Travel Up, uh, a fast growing UK travel agent, online travel agent. Um, travel Up's found itself very much at the center of the storm that's uh, hit the travel industry in the last uh, six or seven weeks. So we're delighted that uh, uh, the founder and CEO Ali has uh, agreed to join us today to talk about the impact on his business and how they're trying to deal with it. So um, thank you, Ali, and welcome. Why don't you just start by just giving us an idea of, of the kind of impact that you've seen as a business since since lockdown started? Is that the month? So, uh, Lee, thank you for having me today. The biggest challenge which we are facing currently is uh, the refunds. Uh, the when when we act as an agent for the airline on behalf of our customers, 89 of, uh, to be more precisely, 93 of those carriers have stopped not only ours, the entire industry's access to process the refunds via the global distribution systems, which over the years, agents like us have developed and integrated against to make the process semi-automatic, if not fully automatic. Okay. That we are forced by the airlines to process through another system, which is not designed for to process such big number of applications, which is complex, time consuming, and it have and a labor intensive system where we have to fill a form for each and every single passenger in a booking with the names and the fare and tax breakdown and the so-called reason codes given by the airlines to process a refund application, which is, which, which is just a delay tactic. And, uh, and this, this is the biggest problem which we are currently facing that I just don't understand that how airlines can change the rule of the game just like that. Just tell us a little bit about your company. We'll, we'll go into some of those um, problems in a bit more detail, but your company, like, like I said, is an OTA, so you largely are dealing with people online. Um, a lot of what you will sell, will it be, it will be uh, airline only or seat only, is that correct? Um, and you are based sort of globally, so you've got a base in, in the UK, but I know your contact centers are overseas so just just give an idea of the scale of the company and and the impact logistically on on how you're able to operate given lockdown is happening globally it's, it's very unfortunate that all of our offices across the globe uh including sri lanka spain pakistan england they they are all under lockdown with 80 percent of our staff on furlough in in, in england we are having we, we received around over 100,000 applications uh, so far. And on a monthly basis, there are 900 percent more what we used to get in normal circumstances. And having a handful of people, we are firefighting, we are doing our, doing our best in interest of our customers to process as many applications as we can, wherever we are, we are allowed to do so. And uh, uh, it's, it's very tough time, very tough time for the industry. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, you're, 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 you've got a 900% increase in inquiries month on month with a fraction of the staff. I mean, how, yeah. how many staff are you able to keep, keep on this? Over 80% of our staff is on furlough. Right. And the rest which is working from home and, and there are multiple inquiries from one, from one customer where we have to, we have to, we, we are trying our best to reply every one of them. 30, over 35,000 of the inquiries which have replied already. And what you've said to me um, as we prepared for this was for each refund request, actually, you've got more than one sort of avenue to um, to deal with because people who are frustrated about refunds are then contacting their credit cards or they're contacting the place they saw the advertising for the, for the, for the flight initially or, the, or they're contacting the airline itself. So every time for one inquiry sometimes you've got four avenues to go down is that so you, you've got multiple um, amounts of work to do for each person that contacts you we vast majority of our customers are very understanding and and we and and we really appreciate uh, their continuous support uh, however with the airlines disabling our access to process the refunds and have to go through that channel where where we have to not only submit to have to follow up manually it's all manual process and with, with very small number of people now, check that if it has come and when it will come. It is it, it is that on the discretion of the airlines. Then when or what they will approve it. Then, and, and remember Lee, that when a refund is, if a refund is processed on first of the month, it only gets settled into the travel agents uh, uh, through the billing settlement plan on the first of the next month. 
in normal circumstances, it takes a couple of weeks to, to, to check the refund is correct, reconcile it, and then make it available to, to be get paid to the customer. But with only a handful of our people and the, and, and the quantity of the refunds which we have received, it's just, uh, it's just very unprecedented times for everything. So we were talking about some quite technical things here um, to do with the industry, which a lot of customers simply don't know about or really don't need to know about. So you mentioned the, the automated GDS or global distribution system um, protocols that are currently not working. And then you mentioned um, payments from airlines, which happens under a, se a separate system called BSP, which IATA looks after. And, and again, there's, there's delay incumbent, there's delay inherent in that system as well of a month. That's what you're saying, yeah? You, yeah. So, so the customers don't really, obviously don't need to understand this, but that is the truth behind what's going on in yeah. the business at the minute. The, 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 the fact is that the airlines are paid in full. And the sooner the airlines reinstate our ability to process the refunds through the normal means, the better it is for everybody that we can process the refunds. Any refunds which we processed, which we was able to process for in the, in the month of March, they we are started paying them already. We have we have we have reconciled those ones, and they are already being paid. Yeah. Any refunds which we have processed uh, in the month of April, we are still not aware of them if they are approved or not yet, and and we are waiting to hear from them. Okay, so so the accusation is often. That the companies are sitting on people's money you know that you hear that all the time you see that on twitter you see it on facebook people have set up facebook groups to 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 share their experiences and they constantly accuse companies of sitting on their money um obviously for most people that's not the case and that what you're saying is for an ota like travel up it simply isn't the case the money is sat still with the airlines with the airline money is sit sat, sat with the airline and it's we have been writing to civil aviation to step in uh, and uh, and use their powers. They are our regulatory bodies to get our customers' money back as soon as possible. We have also taken an action against those airlines. There are 93 of those airlines. We have taken them off sale until 31st of August departures. So that's 93 airlines who have what? Who have stopped paying refunds? You now simply not selling them at all until you can be sure that they start paying refunds. Until we are reinstated through yeah. the same means, the way of the same point of sale. They can take money through the by the by the point of sale. They should be refunding them through the same as well. I see. So yeah. So they're still on sale through the the global distribution systems which yeah. you use, but yeah. behind that they're not doing the refunds to the global distribution system. Yes. Yes. Exactly. This is why we have taken them off sale, and I would also request the global distribution systems to take such airlines off sale as well. They have no right to still continue selling while they are holding the customers' money, which already they have. Yeah. I mean, we are seeing increasingly the state of um, the impact on airlines, and it, it, it's obviously serious. I mean, even the biggest ones in Europe are, are, are needing billions of pounds of bailout from their governments just to keep going. And, and, and there's talk of, you know, household names not surviving this. So we understand, you know, they're, they're in a bit of financial problem themselves. Um, so, so, I mean, I guess you understand that as a businessman that they are they are struggling to do this. But what 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 would you want to see out of them? Why what do you want them to do really in order to try to make sure that the customers, you know, can be reassured that their money will come back to them? I truly understand that this is the most difficult time that travel industry have ever faced, and 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 I'm sure that the industry will never ever the same again. It, it it is it is a difficult time, but how can they change? the rule of the game just like that. Yeah. How can they leave the travel agents on their own? How can they just sit on the money and not pay at all? There should be some policies, they should come up front and for example, the March departures, the, the, they should for first week of departure or second week of departure, they should start clearing them. I heard a statement from uh, uh, the, the world's top airline saying that the refunds will, the backlog will be cleared in maybe mid of August. It's, it's months away. So do you think that really that the airlines should have been told by government, by regulators? You yes. Know, yes, you know, sort yourselves out financially, but the first thing you do is refund the customer. Yes, yes. They have no right to, to, to keep customers' money. Yeah. How, how do you then, looking forward as, a, as an agent, which, you know, we might have a similar situation again, who knows, and it's going to be very difficult for the next foreseeable future to run, to run airlines and to run um, travel companies generally. What, what 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 can what can happen now? Do you think what can what can be brought in now to to ease the situation to help people like you through this, and so I, that we've got a viable industry once we come out of it? 
I, I think we're moving forward. The Civil Aviation and the IATA have to work together to put a trust account in place where the airlines can operate. That is, that is the safest way for our customers. And, uh, uh, and, and they should put pressure on the airlines that how can they just keep the customer's money and put travel agents in this position where they have to process their refunds and leave them through that system, which is, which is not even designed for that, and then wait for their approvals to come and not come while they are telling the customers that we are refunding and, uh, and this, is, this is misinformation. And the fake media, fake news are promoting this misinformation and giving the one side of the story to the customers for their TRPs that they want to, they are telling people what they want to hear, but that is not accurate, that is not correct. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen um, you know, we've seen some pretty high profile campaigns, you might call them, from the likes of Witch and, um, you know, you have Simon Calder on TV quite a lot talking about the law and the package travel regulations, and EU 2261 divide boarding. But you know the raw law is you you should get a refund in seven days or fourteen yeah. days depending on whether it's a package, um, and that you know clearly that's the law. No law one's arguing for that. everyone. Lee, the law is for everyone. It is the law is to protect everyone. Yeah. You cannot just leave some of the some some parts where it, it doesn't apply, and on the other it does apply. Law is equal for everybody. Yeah. So what we're saying is it's not being applied in some area. Yeah. But but there's a cause for it to be applied. You know without without any kind of um, leeway at all in another area and that's where you're suffering isn't it yeah until the until the government comes up for that but there are two types of business when you act as an agent for the airline or for the tra travel package regulations and and until the government comes out in support of the credit notes or the airlines start or the suppliers start giving the customers money back there is uh, th there's nothing which what which what we can do we are processing the refunds which we are receiving yeah. And, uh, and we're trying to, our best to be on top of everything. Uh, and we need the continuous support from our customers, not only ours, to the entire industry's customers to understand that where we are and all we are doing is to help them get their monies as soon as possible. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's the case, is, it's certainly the case for many agents out there, is that um, you know, they're the ones with the, um, the customer relationship because they're the people who dealt with the customer at the point of, at the point of sale. And so many of those agents, including yourself, um, are out there trying to use these systems to get the money back for the customer. And yet it's them that's getting sort of, you know, the, the, raw, the raw end of, of the complaints because they did deal with you. They, did give, give, they gave you the money in the first place. So they do go to you. That's fair enough. But, but, you know, these agents are working on behalf of the consumer. And if they didn't, if they weren't around, they would be in the situation of having to try to get the money off those those airlines, airlines which is I far agree. more difficult as a consumer than it is a, a company. I 100% agree. This is why I would request all the customers to please support their travel agents and uh, uh, to, to, to get their monies recovered from the airlines. Uh, if, the, if the business is, as the fake media is, uh, is promoting, that if the businesses, the travel agents go under, there will be further delays of their refunds, or maybe they would not be able to get no refunds at all. Yeah. So do you think the, some, of the, some of the campaigns that you see, which is often um, encouraging people to, to go down the route of a charge back to their, with their credit card, are, are these um, potentially um, you know, not, not, not great advice for consumers? If they went down that route, they would make the situation more difficult and actually they wouldn't get the money back any quicker than, 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 than trusting their travel agent is, on, is, is in there trying to get it for them. So the travel agent is appointed by, by the customer. The travel agent works for the customer. And the, the fact of the matter is that where is the money? The chargeback would come to a travel agent, but where is the money? If the travel agent doesn't have the money, then the, 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 how it will be paid until it gets back from the airlines. Yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you seeing chargebacks coming in at the minute, Ali? And are you able to deal with them? AC, over 50% of our resources are firefighting with the chargebacks. That even delays us further because there's, there's, there, there, there are four inquiries from the same customer. Yeah. And then they have uh, gone to the chargebacks as well. We are fighting for one customer on the five different angles. Either we work on the chargeback or we, res or we respond to that or we, we, we respond to the queries with very handful number of people, as I say it, say it again. Yeah. So you, you, so you said... You sell a lot of airline tickets, acting as an agent for the airline, but you don't yeah. just sell airline tickets. You do sell packages and holidays and you yeah. sell um, 
So wherever accommodation, we, how, how, how is it in other areas outside of the airline industry? Are you able to refund the packages and the, and the accommodation? Yes, we have been, where, where, wherever we have been uh, uh, acting as a principal and we have sold the package, we have either, uh, we, we have been in touch with all of our customers. They have either rebooked or already refunded or the refunds are being processed. Okay. So, so that, that, that is what you can do when you're in control of, of the situation, yeah. I, I guess, yeah. and, every, and everyone's of course be doing that. Yeah. So we talked about a minute ago, you know, what, how the industry might change because of this. And you mentioned, you know, some sort of, of, of trust, trust fund. Um, and that seems to be growing in popularity as a, as, a, as a way to prevent this happening in the future. But trust funds aren't for everybody. Trust funds do mean that a lot of your revenue is tied up, obviously, in the trust at some point. And, and it's, it seems very unlikely that firms will be able to go from this sort of moment of crisis into a trust fund quickly because the one thing they do need is revenue. So how, how do you see the, the industry trans, transitioning towards trust? See, funds doesn't, funds doesn't stay with us for long anyway. We, we issue the ticket on the same day automatic. And then in the billing cycle, the funds go direct to the airline. Yeah. yeah so it's the airlines who need to be monitored and who need to come under the trust accounts. Yeah. So really, should the airlines be, be regulated in exactly the same way as everybody else? At the moment, yeah. it's separate. That, that's yeah. what you think should happen. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you, you are, you're not a member of ABTA, are you? No, we are not. No. But you've seen they have obviously been out there trying to um, play a kind of intermediary role. Yes. <laughs> and, and they're getting a lot of, a lot of flack themselves from consumer groups because of that, because of their stance. What, what, just what, a few thoughts on, on how they've, they've um, approached this on behalf of the industry, because they become kind of the go-to uh, authority from the industry side um, about how companies should do with refunds. Do you think they've dealt with it as well as possible, or were there things that you, you felt you could have done with more of? They, they definitely could have done more of. Uh, whatever they have done, we, we really appreciate. Everyone is trying their best to, to recover from the situation. This has never happened before, and no business was prepared for this. We are learning through the process. Every business is learning through the process. And, and, and we, uh, I hope it doesn't come again in our lifetimes. Yeah. But if it does, I hope that we will be prepared for, 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 for a pandemic like this. Yeah. And I know, look, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the criticism because there's people in the industry like, I guess, Richard Branson and, and many others who've, who've become very wealthy out of the industry and you know, personally wealthy. So, you know, they've been successful, but they are personally wealthy. So a lot of criticism is coming their way personally because um, people feel when they can't get refunds, these people have benefited on the back of, you know, an industry that's not operated properly. And, 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 and that's um, sometimes there's a degree of criticism you can take, but you know, you're, you're a company that you built from nothing. I mean, I've, I've interviewed before, you came from Pakistan with, with nothing and built an, a, a company from scratch. Um, is, it, is it disappointing to you that, you know, you're being sort of tarred with that kind of brush because people think you're sitting on their money and, you know, you're op operating in the wrong kind of way when, when you know, you've spent the last 15 years building a company up from nothing? Yeah, suddenly when the pandemic came after the lockdown on 22nd of March, everything changed. People have worked all their lives to, 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 to be where they are today. But when the pandemic came and the misconception of that you are sitting on people's money is totally incorrect. The money is with the carriers, the money is with the airlines, and they need to return. The money is there. It's just a matter of time that when they start giving it to the customers and we are just trying our level best, whatever we can, working day and night. We don't even have time lead to mourn on there. Hundreds of people are died that we don't even have time to mourn on that. We are humans as well. Our staff is under great pressure and, and they are doing their, their level best for our customers. And, yeah. I, and, and every, every travel agent's uh, staff, are, we are working, we have never before. And, I, and I'm, sure, I'm sure at the same time you understand it from the customer's point of view. I'm sure you understand that customers who feel as though, well, you know, they may suddenly be in a very difficult situation themselves. They may have had a, a loved one die. They may have um, lost their jobs. But you, you understand clearly they want their money back. We truly, we, we truly understand. And, and, and this, is, this is why we are working day and night for, for our customers that if we had the money, there was no problem at all that if that money was not given to airline, we wouldn't even take a second. 
all, all all we are all we are trying is to get their money back from the airlines we need their support to join hands with us and ask airlines to give the money back so that people can get on with their lives yeah let, let's look a bit further forward then ali about the industry going going forward once you know we, we get out of all this and um, ha, has has the pandemic um uncovered some really difficult structural issues commercially financially with with the industry and and do you do you see this as being a watershed moment really where um you know mass market low cost cheap travel maybe will be seen as a thing of the past and if it is what does what does that say about your your business which is you know it is in the mass market uh, do you worry that that's the case or do you think You'll find a way to re to restart things and go back to something like it used to be. I certainly I certainly think that the industry has changed forever, and the low cost, high volume business will not recover uh, and will never be back. But they will be they, 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 it's going to be changed. It's going okay. to be changed, and in line with the market, we are dynamic business, so we we are we we will be changing ourselves as well. Okay, what's that, what sort of things do you think then? You think you'll be moving into more tailor made? Package yes. type thing. Yes, is that is that the future for, for travel yes, up? Yes. yes, that is the future where we will be adding on more and more products rather than yep. the flight only, uh, and uh, uh, and work on the on, on the less quantity than we have been always working, uh, but uh, a, a good quality. Yeah, and a lot of people have been talking about um, how during this um, lockdown period, we're talking more face to face, but virtually over over platforms like Zoom, which we're using now. Do, do, do you see that changing in your business where um, you will have, or people will be expected to sort of see the people they're dealing with as opposed to just to sort of deal with a, a website or someone over the phone? Do you think that might be something you have to... Um, I think that, to? yes, I, I, I think that could be one of the medium where uh, moving forward, that could be one of a good uh, good tool. For, yeah. I think, I think a good way to communicate. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you worry that um, a lot of the trust in travel brands is being undermined at the minute and, and some of those brands won't be able to recover from the lack of, from the loss of trust? I, I, I worry because the, not only that, well, yes, the travel industry is the most hit industry. The way people are going to travel in future is going to be changed forever. And yes, there is a threat for, uh, for the entire industry. And there would be lots of airlines and lots of agents, which may not be able to survive. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Uh, that's a really good sort of update on where you're at with this, and then some of the difficulties that you're facing. What well, just well, where when do you when do you envisage there'll, there'll be a time when you work through the backlog of, of claims that you could be out of this period? So any, uh, it's we, we are totally in hands of the airlines, as you may have heard that one of the top airline in the world have uh, uh, have said that they they will be able to clear the backlog by mid August. We are processing as many applications as we can, uh, and I would again like this opportunity to thank all uh, the customers industry wise for their understanding, for their continuous support, and rest assured that we are doing everything possible to get their monies back to them as soon as possible. Okay, and are you seeing any? Sort of green shoots for the future. Are you seeing demand for 2021 or uh, maybe even towards the end of this year coming back? Are you getting inquir good inquiries in that sense, or are you still just firefighting? We are we are still firefighting. To be honest, we are not even thinking about sale. We have taken off uh, 93 of those airlines, which are not supporting us in this tough time and and making us even difficult for us to process the refunds. Uh, we are not even thinking. We are just trying our our best to deal with our existing customers yeah are you are you confident about your position going forward then have you got the got the company in a, in a position to survive and go forward yes we are we we we, we, we are very confident that we will go through this tough time yeah. and uh, by by mid of august or earlier i think that when airlines start flying they will be they will be they have to release uh, they they will be releasing customers money uh, offering more alternative dates and uh, and I think in I, I think the peak is over not just for the pandemic just for, for everything to be honest it's just a matter of weeks or a month or two now that we will hope we hopefully will be able to clear the backlog yeah it, it, just finally do you worry um, for the future about a situation in which it's very unclear very unclear where you can fly to or who can fly into what country you can see a situation where 
there's flare-ups in the pandemic in various countries that you might sell tickets to, but equally there could be a flare-up back here in the UK, which means that they don't want you Brits to travel to those countries. So, it's, so potentially you've got a very uncertain future. How, how do you worry about that and how do you think an industry copes with it? So the industry has changed forever. Uh, where where the customer we 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 operate worldwide, and uh, it will be depending on the destination and and the departing countries uh, that what what uh, logistics they are applying and what is uh, what is necessary to do so. If the thermal temperatures are on the airports, uh, what will be the terms and conditions for for from the airlines? That if somebody does have temperature and uh, and and at the destination, if we would be carrying the certificates of COVID COVID negative certificates, or they will be done at the destination. So a lot has to come. We are still going through this uh, this pandemic, which is changed the entire world. Not only the only the travel industry, we, the way we live, the way we holiday, the way we eat, every single the way we work, everything is changed. I suppose, I suppose going forward, there will be, have to be a lot more flexibility and. The way all companies operate. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that it's uh, the terms and conditions for for the airlines. They they, they must change them. Yeah. And, and then that probably means different regulations as well. When, when when we've got time to go through what those regulations are, because yeah, yeah, they're very strict at the minute, and there's very, there's very little leeway. So yeah, yeah. All right. As I said, Ali, thanks very much for joining us and giving some of your time today, because I'm sure you're super busy helping out. The guys with, with with all the work that they've got at the minute so we appreciate appreciate that and um thank you wish you all the best thank you Lee. and good luck